Hello everybody, Seth here again with the world of paleoanthropology. I'm very excited to be here today. For those of you who may not know, I have decided that I'll be doing these 10 minute shorts about every week now. I'm going to try to record them every Friday and get them out on Fridays and make sure we all have some paleoanthropological news going on in our everyday lives because it's so fast moving, so fast paced. You know, we really need to struggle to keep up with everything. In fact, today's episode was going to be on myths about Neanderthals, but because of something that was announced just today for Fossil Friday, I'm going to be changing what we're talking about, and we're going to be talking about a site in Spain called Atapuerca. And this is not a new site. This is an old site where we have found many fossils before, we don't exactly know what species they belong to. There's some, you know, conjecture. The site dates to around 1.2 million years old. So far, it was the oldest known hominins found in Western Europe or Europe in general. And that was a big deal. They were found in 2007. And when they were found, it, of course, changed everything that we knew about migration of hominins outside of Africa. And it made us rethink everything that we knew. Now, of course, we fast forward now to 2022, and we have another discovery. Now, this discovery was a partial face. We can see part of the mandible. We can see where some of the teeth would be inserted. You can see pictures in the associated blog post that I've already made, so be sure to check that out on my website, www.worldofpaleoanthropology.org. We have an article that details all of the information. So this new find, which was actually found literally June 30th, 2022, so just a couple days ago by, and I am sorry if I pronounce his name wrong, Edgar Tejeles, and it was a big find. And again, you can find the pictures in the blog post and learn all about it. But this new find is so important because it dates to 1.4 million years ago, which is a whole 200,000 years older than any previously known fossils. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but of course when we're dealing with anything that lives, that's quite a long time. So pushing the date of when these hominins arrived in Western Europe is very important and crucial to our understanding of the diaspora of the hominins at this time. So along with the partial face, there was a tooth that was found, which they are going to be analyzing as well. And they're going to be doing protonomics on it to see if we can gain anything from the proteins that may be left in there, which can tell us what they ate, what they did, and a lot of the activity of the daily lives of whatever creatures these were. Now, because we only have such a partial size of the skull, it is very difficult to determine what species this might have been. The fact that we know Homo antecessor was roaming around Europe a little before the, or a little after this, it's kind of complicated on knowing is this Homo antecessor? Is this a common ancestor of some sort between? All of the main hominins that we know were in Europe, which would be, of course, Homo sapiens at a later date, much later date, much, much later date. Neanderthals, Denisovans, Homo heidelbergensis, which some consider to be an early form of Homo neanderthalensis. And they're all supposed to have a common ancestor known as Homo antecessor, which does date to around this time, but there's such a fragmentary record of this hominin that we really know so little about it. And of course, scientists are striving daily to figure out who these hominins were, what they were doing, 
and how they got where they were, because those are the big questions. We know so much about hominins in Africa and what they were doing, their lives, and how they survived. And we know a lot, of course, about hominins later on in Europe's history. We know a great deal about Neanderthals. Denisovans are a mystery that was just beginning to unfold a couple decades ago, so we're still very clueless there. But we have some idea of what's going on. But when you go farther back in Europe's history, such as what was going on at the Menisi with Homo erectus and how strange and unique those fossils look compared to African Homo erectus or Homo ergaster, as some would prefer to call them. So we really don't know what's going on in Europe. And having this new fossil is very important. It's strikingly important because it shows where we've been. And we can't know where we're going if we don't know where we've been. So it's critical to study this fossil. Now, the dating, of course, is going to take around a year to be completed, to do proper dating. The dating that we have now is just from the layers that was that the fossil was in C2 or where it was found. And based on that and based on a job, the jawbone that was found in 2007, which has been dated already, this was about two meters below it. So because we know how time works with geology, we know that these fossils were older than the ones found above it. So we can guess or estimate it's about 200,000 years older. But of course, we'll have to wait for that final dating that again is going to take about a year to be completed. Now, between now and a year, there's going to be so much that we learn about this fossil. And the fact that we found it now means we can do more excavations around the site and look specifically for more fragments that belong to this individual or other individuals of its kind. Now, one of the very interesting things about this partial face that we have here is we can see part of the chin. Did you catch that? Chin. If you know anything about hominins, the only hominin to ever have a chin is us, Homo sapiens. So it's very interesting that this hominin, whatever it is, has something that resembles a chin. Of course, it's not looking exactly like a modern day chin, but it looks like a chin, at least from what we can see. And this is very strange, in my opinion. I don't know how. This must be some branch that was unconnected to our, I don't know, honestly. And I don't think we will know for a long time. And the fact that we have found something new yet again just really shows that there are still so many things out there to find. I, you have to remember, we've been on this planet, just our species, for about 300,000 years. Our lineage, the Homo genus, about going back to Homo habilis, we have about 2.5 million, I believe. I could be stand corrected. And before that, we, of course, have the Australopiths. So there's millions of years, at least in Africa, of a fossil record that has to be dug up. And... The size of the continent of Africa, and at least the parts where we're looking, are massive. And the fact that we haven't looked really in West Africa and North Africa, partially because of the climates and difficulties politically, and the fact that it's just difficult to get to these regions, who knows what else we could find. You have to keep looking. You have to remember there is more out there. There is a reason to get into this field. There's a reason to bring new scientists in. We need new eyes on things because we are finding things, it seems, all the time. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed the news. It's quite stunning, in my opinion, the fact that we now know some form of humanoid was in Europe 1.4 million years ago. We will have to see what develops in the next few days, weeks, and months. But keep your eyes open for that. And again, in the description below, I will link 
the article that goes along with this video where you can get more detail on this particular specimen that was found. But as for now, I think that'll wrap it up for this week. I hope all of you had a great week, and I want you all to have a great weekend. And for now, bye.